here to care for you. Our life is better with him in it. I love you. You go home and you hope the family doesn't get COVID from you. I'd still be paying the $9,000 if I hadn't contacted 7.30. We'd really let those horses down. Why do you think they didn't want you to win an election? Because they thought I would win it. If the virus doesn't get you, the economic fallout will. I was hell-bent on proving people wrong. Why all the secrecy? Lee, I'm just focused on the Australian people. 7.30 tonight, ABC and iView. Tomorrow on News Breakfast, we'll speak to the director of the new documentary, The Rise of the Murdoch Dynasty. It's about to air on the ABC. And one of the nation's favourites, Magda Zubansky, joins us as she releases her second children's book. Don't miss it. Family has always been very important to Rupert Murdoch, of forming a dynasty. Sunday night. One of the most interesting people in the world. The three-part television event. There's only one Rupert that we know. I watch these big politicians encircling him. Very scary for democracy. The phone hacking was systemic. I thought, how do they know where I am? I don't make any comments. It was a bomb inside the family. Right, what a story. The Rise of the Murdoch Dynasty. Sunday on ABC and iView. Good morning, Ferones. You're now living through the depths of the Great Depression. You haven't been able to pay the electricity bill. Peter and Julian, you're both out of work. Just going to sell anything that's valuable. You'll need to find ways and means to keep your spirits high. Movies! Hi, like Julian. And put food on the table. I'm starving. The 30s is all about a bumpy ride. Good luck. Further back in time for dinner, Tuesday, 8.30, on ABC and iView. We are one, but we are many, and from all the lands on earth we come, we share a dream, and sing with one voice, I am, you are, we are Australian, we are one. Surprise fall in the jobless numbers, but the Treasurer warns the figures don't tell the whole story. <music> Melbourne on track to lift restrictions while regional Victorians enjoy their first taste of freedom. A Perth man in hospital after being shot by police in a suburban standoff. And the pandemic project that turned into a prize winning artwork. Hello, welcome to ABC News. I'm Karina Cavallo. The unemployment rate has posted a significant fall down from 7.5% in July to 6.8% last month. Even the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, is surprised to see an improvement. Political reporter Matthew Doran is in Canberra. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg says that it is a signal that the nation is starting to return to some sense of normality after those coronavirus lockdowns and shutdowns that we experienced earlier this year. But he is warning that uh, this situation, the tough economic times, will be with uh, the nation for many months to come. We are, of course, now in a recession for the first time in almost 30 years. And that's not going to be any sort of quick uh, turnaround for the government or for 
the economy. There will still be uh, federal support needing to be injected into the economy for some time to come. This change in the unemployment rate, that improvement was against what many in the market were expecting, thinking that it would, uh, the unemployment rate would either stay the same or tick upwards. Instead, it did come down with an extra 111,000 new jobs created. But if we look at those new jobs, we do have to point out that 74,000 of them were part-time positions. And when we're talking about underemployment, the underemployment rate, which are people who are currently employed, they are picking up a few hours, but they want to have more and simply can't get more hours uh, under their belt. The underemployment rate is sitting steady at around 11.2%, and that is a figure that uh, the government and workers in general would want to see starting to come down. A few of the other key figures to pick up from this, uh, we've seen the total hours worked increase slightly by 1.6%. However, it is still well down on the same time last year. It's still down by more than 5% on the August month last year. And when we're talking about people who might still be connected to their, their jobs but might not be actually working any hours, there's more than 215,000 people in that boat right around the country. And with Victoria still going through those tough lockdown restrictions, they're experiencing it the worst with more than half of that figure, 113,000 people not working any hours during August. So it is something of a surprise here and, and the figures might be seen as somewhat rosy, but the uh, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg says there is still a long road to recovery ahead and he says that there are a few underlying factors that need to be taken into account. We're also focused on the effective unemployment rate. Now that remains at 9.3 per cent, a higher rate because it takes into account those who have left the labour force as well as those who are on zero hours. But what you can take from these numbers is that more people are getting back into work. Well, certainly Brendan O'Connor, the Shadow Employment Minister, has welcomed this improvement in the jobless rate, but he says that this shows that there is still a lot of pain ahead and that there does need to be ongoing Commonwealth support at its current rate for many months to come. When we're talking about that Commonwealth support, if we look at JobKeeper, the wage subsidy program, currently that is a $1,500 a fortnight flat rate for every employee that a business keeps on their books. From the end of this month, so uh, beginning in October, that changes from $1,500 flat rate to a $1,250 rate for full-time workers and $750 for part-time and casual workers. That will run until the end of the year. Then in the new year, that will be cut again to another lower amount. Same with the job seeker unemployment benefit. That's been propped up by the so-called coronavirus supplement. That starts to be uh, wound back from next month and then off into the future, the government is still weighing up its options as to how it will continue with that uh, level of support. Brendan O'Connor says, yes, these figures are, uh, are welcome, but it shouldn't be any sort of excuse for the government to uh, be thinking that the time for it to stop writing out checks to uh, members of the public right across the country is coming anytime soon. I hope they don't look at these figures and think everything's fine and we, we can continue on our merry way cutting support cutting job seeker, cutting job keeper, uh, cutting the support, not providing sufficient stimulus packages. That's the Shadow Employment Minister Brendan O'Connor speaking earlier today in Melbourne. Of course, these latest figures come ahead of the federal budget, which is due in around two weeks' time. And the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, says there will be details in that all-important document, a budget that has been delayed by many months because of the coronavirus pandemic. There will be details in there about ongoing Commonwealth support and its plan to try to get more people back into work uh, when it's released uh, in just a few weeks' time. Let's take a closer look at some of those numbers now. Sue Lin Ong is Chief Economist at RBC Capital Markets and she joins me now from Sydney. Sue Lin Ong, thanks so much for your time tonight. Were you surprised by this drop in the jobless rate? We were surprised. We'd been anticipating a small lift actually in the unemployment rate um, and yet we, we got a fairly decent uh, decline. And not only that, when we look across the suite of data in today's labour force, um, there were encouraging signs in terms of employment generation, hours worked um, and even a fairly steady underemployment rate. So it wasn't just the unemployment rate um, that was better news. Um, we saw it really across most of the details in the numbers. And 
the breakdown in the states, that was significant as well, wasn't it? A bounce back in employment in New South Wales, Queensland and WA. Is that because hospitality and tourism is coming back online in those places? Yeah, it's very clear um, the different trends in the states. I mean, it's not surprising. Victoria, a very significant underperformer, labour shedding in that state, a rise in unemployment and a big lift in the numbers of Victorians who were on zero hours um, in terms of, of work. So very clear underperformance there, reflecting really the step up in restrictions to level four that started in early August. But encouragingly, when we look outside Victoria, as you suggested, um, a lift really in employment right across every other state and territory, um, as increase in hours worked as well, which is a very good sign, um, and a mixed performance in terms of unemployment rates in other states, but it, quite a number falling. And in particular, we take um, some comfort in, in New South Wales um, as the largest state um, and, and the biggest uh, employment employment area, um, though those trends were really moving in the right direction and quite encouraging. So outside of Victoria, we would say the labour market trends are heading in the right direction and there's clearly some recovery going on in this broader labour market. You brought up Victoria, the effective unemployment rate in that state jumped from 10.5% to 13%. You mentioned the big lift in the number of people who have worked zero hours. Is all of that likely to get worse in the coming months? Look, we don't think it'll get a lot worse in Victoria. Some of the leading indicators, like the weekly payrolls data that we get, is suggesting some, uh, some easing in the pace of labour shedding um, in Victoria. And I think as we move um, closer to some lifting of restrictions, um, we should also see some improvement. And the template is pretty clear from the other states. Um, when you start to ease back on restrictions and lift, um, as uh, you know, key industries open up, as employment comes back, it's fairly clear that you get that recovery. So um, we've seen a fairly big hit to Victoria in the month of August. It was um, the peak in terms of the lift in restrictions. Um, we are hopeful that we will see a little bit of easing in the months ahead. But look, it's still a long way out for Victoria and there's still a great deal of uncertainty. We are assuming that the restrictions will start to ease later uh, in, in the course of Q4, uh, you know, from, from about November. Um, but look, that, that's still fairly uncertain. And there are, of course, still three and a half million people on JobKeeper. That begins tapering off at the end of this month and comes to an end in March next year. So will we only know the real unemployment figure once that scheme ends? I think that's right, and that's a really important observation. There's no doubt that the JobKeeper program is flattering the official unemployment rate. And while you know there was some improvement in the month of August, we know that effective unemployment rate is much higher, as the Treasurer suggests, probably closer to 9%. Um, as JobKeeper starts to wind back and eventually cease, you'll find a lot of the people that were on JobKeeper um, will come off that. There may not be jobs available. They'll return to the labour force and, and look start to look for work and there may not be jobs available depending on really the strength of this recovery. So there is a real risk in our view that while the unemployment rate looks a little better now and may do over the next few months, um, as we move further into um, the end of this year and 2021, there's a risk that there is some upward pressure on the unemployment rate then. And the higher job seeker, so that's the unemployment payment, that ends at the end of the year. Does the government need to look at keeping the higher payment level into next year? Look, I think that's very much part of discussions that are going on at the moment. Um, the rate will reduce um, starting from the 1st of October um, and is technically meant to um, finish up by the end of this year. I think um, that really across a number of um, of supporters in terms of where that rate should be. I think it's unlikely to revert to its original rate, which is very low and has not really moved um, for many years. So I think there is a reasonably strong case to um, look for a permanently higher rate, but I suspect that is a discussion going on and we may hear more about that from the Treasurer in the upcoming budget. Um, hard borders has been a big political topic and I'm not going to ask you to comment on the politics of it, but how important is it for the economy that